Before I present the slightly more detailed version of the argument, I want to bring to your attention two helpful facts that you're going to need to keep in the back of your mind. I kind of presupposed them in the last video, so maybe this will help understand what was said in the last video as well. The first thing is something about just straightforward mutual knowledge. And this is that, well, if it's true that for all one of them knows, P is false, then it can't be mutual knowledge that P. So if it's either true that for all Roman knows, P is false, or for all that Columba knows, P is false, then it can't be that they mutually know that P. Why is that? Well, because we know that mutual knowledge is just for them both to know P. So if I know P, it can't be that for all I know, P is false. Those are just incompatible. So if they both know P, it cannot be that for either of them, for all they know, P is false. The second helpful fact is something that kind of follows on for it. So we said at the first level, if for all one of them knows P is false, then mutual knowledge fails at level one. But actually this generalizes. So for instance, if it's the case that for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, it's raining, for instance, then it can't be mutually known to level two that it's raining. Why is that? Well, think about what that would involve. If it was mutually known to level two that it was raining, that would mean that they both know that they both know that it's raining. So if it's mutual knowledge that it's mutual knowledge, in particular, Roman knows that it's mutual knowledge. But if Roman knows that it's mutual knowledge that it's raining, and it, it's being mutual knowledge entails that they both know, and, and in particular that Columba knows, then it must just follow that Roman knows that Columba knows that it's raining. So if it's mutually known that it's mutually known that it's raining, in particular it's going to follow that Roman knows that Columba knows that it's raining. But then for the same kind of reason as we saw before, it can't be that for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, it's not raining. Because Roman knows what Columba knows in this situation. Roman knows that Columba knows that it is rain. And the point here is even more general. So if you have some proposition that you write down with some string of the for all you knows operator, so like for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, if you have a string like that, let's say the number is x, it has x many of these oper for, all, for all they know operators, and you put that in, some, in front of some proposition, call it not p, if there are x many of those operators in front of not p, then p cannot be known to level x. So we just saw a specific example of that. We said if it's true that for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, it's not raining, then it can't be mutual level, it can't be mutual knowledge to level 2, because that's how many for all for all they know operators we had. The point is just much more general. And this is going to be helpful to keep at the back of your mind, because this is what we're going to use at the very end to justify the claim that the mass is not commonly known to be greater than 100 centimeters tall. So keep both of those facts at the back of your mind. Let's now start writing down some of the things that we know in this situation. In particular, we know that we said that the tree looks to be some particular height to Roman, and we picked 300 centimeters tall. Well, let this be our first premise. So the tree looks 300 centimeters to Roman. We know that this premise about interpersonal ignorance is commonly known. So it's commonly known that if the tree looks to be a particular height to one person, then for all that person knows, it could be a little it could look a little shorter to the other person. Now if that's commonly known, then it has to be known, so it has to be a fact. So in particular, it has to be a fact that if the tree looks 300 centimeters to Roman, then for all he knows, it could look a little bit shorter to Columba. So if we use this interpersonal ignorance premise, we can argue that for all Roman knows, the tree is, the tree looks, sorry, I should be doing this in terms of the mast. The mast looks, we said, three centimeters shorter to Columba. So it follows from interpersonal ignorance that if in fact the mass looks 300 centimeters to Roman, then he can't rule out that it looks slightly shorter to Columba. This basically corresponds to the first zig in our, in our previous picture. This corresponds to the arrow going from the first world to the second world. 
But now, just as we asked, well, what's true of Columba at the Second World, we can ask, well, what follows from the fact that it looks 297 centimeters to Columba? Well, we know that if it looks a certain way to Columba, then for all she knows, it could look a little bit shorter to Roman. But moreover, this is something that Roman himself knows. Uh, in every world compatible with his knowledge, if it looks a particular height to Columba, then it follows that she can't in that same world rule out that it might be a little bit shorter to Roman. What this means is we can then, we then get this next step in the argument. So for all Roman knows, For all Columba knows, it looks a little bit shorter, namely 294 centimeters to Roman. It's worth keeping track, so this is 300 minus 3 times 2, and of course this is 300 minus 3 times 1. This will just help us keep track of how, how tall the tree is supposed to be at every step. So let's just take a moment to, again to see what happens. So we said that it's true that for all Roman knows it looks 297 centimeters tall to, to Columba because it's public information that if it looks one way to one of them for all they know it could be a little bit shorter to the other person. So in particular he knows that if it looks that way to Columba, then for all she knows, it could look a little shorter to him. That, together with closure, allows us to derive this third step, that for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, it looks 294 to Roman. So this corresponds to the second zag in our argument, where when we moved using Columba's accessibility relation back to a world where it looked slightly shorter to Roman. And then we can sort of keep doing this. So. To get to the next step, let's start by just focusing on the innermost thing here, which is that it looks 294 centimeters to Roman. Well, we know by interpersonal ignorance, if it looks a certain height to Roman, it could be a little bit shorter. For all he knows, it could look a little bit shorter to Columba. But we're all suppo we're supposing that this is happening in, in some world compatible with what Columba knows. So if this is true, in, in, if this is true in some world compatible with Columba knows, and in any such world where this is true, it could look, then for all Roman knows, it, it looks a little bit shorter, then that last thing is going to hold in some world com compatible with what Columba knows. But remember again, this is all supposed to be happening in some world compatible with Roman knows. So what we're going to get is that for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows for all Roman knows it looks two hundred and ninety one to Columba. So we're we're able to extend our string of for all I know up for all they know operators a little bit further and take the height down a little bit further still. And just as we did here, we can rewrite this just to keep track as 300 minus 3 times 3. Now we can keep doing this. I'm not actually going to keep doing this. But if you think about it, you'll see for yourself what, what happens eventually if we keep doing this. We get to a point where something like this is true. In fact, it's stage 68 for those who want to know. So we have something like this, for all R knows, for all C knows, we have some string of these alternating like that, and at the end it'll be for all Roman knows, the tree looks 300 centimeters minus 3 times 67. And if you do the mathematics, you'll see that that is in fact 99 centimeters. 
So what we've done, this corresponds to the stage in the earlier description where we eventually get to a world where it looks to be shorter than it was supposed to be public information that it is. So it's supposed to be public information that the tree, that the mast is 100 centimeters tall. We saw that we get to a world eventually using our premises where it looks to Columba to be shorter than that. And that's basically what this premise is saying. It's saying that for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, you just keep going like that for some for some long time until you eventually get to, for all Roman knows, the tree looks 300 centimeters minus 3 by 63, 67, which is 99. The last thing to do here is to apply our no known illusion principle, which says that, well, if the tree looks to a particular person, actually, sorry, this should be Columba, if, it look, if the tree looks to a particular person, either Roman, Roma or, Roman or Columba, to be a certain height, then for all they know, it could be that height. So then we're allowed to go for all R knows, for all C knows, and so on for some long time, then for all R knows, for all C knows, The mast is 99 centimeters. All right, equals to note that. So this corresponds to the step where we found that when we go down the string long enough, we get to a world where it's compatible with what Columba knows of that world, that the mast is 99 centimeters tall, i.e. shorter than it's publicly known to be. So let's reflect on what we've gotten. So if you go through the stages of the argument, you eventually get to this, this step where we know we, it doesn't really matter, we don't really need to count how many of these operators there are. We know that for some, for some finite, for some finite length, if you keep alternating between for all Roman nodes, for all Columba nodes, for all Roman nodes, you eventually get to, uh, it's 99 centimeters. But now let's remember our second helpful fact. So remember we said that, for instance, if, if for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, not P, then it can't be mutually known that P. Or if for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, for all Roman knows, not P, then it can't be mutually known to level three, but not P. Or if for Roman knows, for all Columba knows, for all Roman knows, for all Columba knows, not P, then it can't be mutually known to level four. And we know that this string However long it is, you can calculate it, it doesn't really matter what length it is, but it's some alternating string of these for all R nodes, for all C nodes, for all R, R nodes. So in fact that number is 67, if you count it, there, there are going to be 67 of these for all they know operators. We can basically just think of the 99, 99 centimeters entails that it's not greater than 100. So basically we've derived that for if we have a string of 67 of these alternating operators, it's for all they know to level 67 uh, possible that the mass is in fact 99 centimeters and so less than 100 centimeters tall. But then given our helpful fact number two, it's going to then follow to whatever level of mutual knowledge corresponds to this string, in fact it's mutual knowledge to level 67, it's not going to be mutually known that the tree is greater than 100 centimeters because for some string of these operators of length 67, it's compatible with what's mutually known to level 67 when in fact the tree is 99 centimeters tall. But if it's possible relative to what is mutually known to level 67 that it's 99 centimeters tall, then it can't be mutually known to that level that it's greater than 100 centimeters tall. But remember, finally, that if it's common knowledge, then it's supposed to be known at all levels. So if it's common knowledge that the tree is greater than 100 centimeters tall, then it's going to be mutually known to level 67 that the, 100, that the tree is greater than 100 centimeters tall. But that, in effect, just con contradicts this conclusion that we were able to derive. So what happened was that we started with this premise that the mass looks to be a certain height. We're able to go through all these steps up till here, you up to up to here using just the interpersonal ignorance. So going through the sort of 
accumulating chain of ignorance about each other's minds. The last step here relied on this no known illusion principle, and we see that this last step is incompatible with the idea that the tree is commonly known to be greater than 100 centimetres tall. So we've derived a contradiction on the assumption that public information is common knowledge. We said it's supposed to be public information that the tree is greater than 100 centimetres tall. If ideal common knowledge held, that would mean it's commonly known that the tree is greater than 100 centimetres tall. But that latter thing is just incompatible with the, premise, the premises that we accumulated and motivated on the, basis of, on the basis of the case. We saw that the interpersonal ignorance premise looks plausible. We saw that the no known illusion principle looks plausible. We saw the closure looks plausible because we're assuming that they're ideal reasoners. Putting that all those together with the fact that it looks to be some particular height to one of them, we can then essentially just derive that it's not common knowledge that the tree is greater than 100 centimeters tall. We said that whatever public information is, is public that's greater than 100 centimeters tall. So then this then just seems to refute, Lederman thinks, the idea that publicity is common knowledge. Because it is public, it really is public, he thinks in this case, that the tree is, 100 centimeters tall, is greater than 100 centimeters tall. If you think about the case, it's just supposed to be obvious to everybody that it is greater than, that the second mast is taller than the first mast. But it can't be common knowledge because Lederman says all those other premises were true and we can just argue on the basis of those other premises that it isn't common knowledge. So he thinks publicity cannot be common knowledge.